Please have mercy, Jeffrey. Jeffrey is a blood-hungry warlord. Everyone respects him. Everyone looks up to him. His kill count is in the hundreds. But that's in the virtual world. But in the real world, Jeffrey is a loser. He's weak, he's lazy, and he's undisciplined. He got poor grades in school. He has a job that he doesn't even like. Jeffrey lives a life like most men. The real world around him isn't that stimulating, and so he sinks deeper and deeper into the virtual world where he can be anything that he wants. But he doesn't realize that the more time he spends in video games, the less ability he has to level up in real life. Adonis. Does Adonis look like the kind of man who would choose to sink deeper into the virtual world instead of enjoying the fruits of his labor in real life? No. Adonis has put in the work, the discipline, the grind, so that his real life feels like a video game. He hunts, he feasts, he grows with his tribe. He's been promoted time and time again till he became the tribe leader. He feels amazing. He has a feeling of brotherhood and of conquering challenges. He has a family, a beautiful wife, and children who look up to him. Adonis lives the perfect life, and that's because he didn't waste time leveling up in video games. Bro, I used to run home from school to play RuneScape. I used to run home from school to play Minecraft. I used to run home from college to play League of Legends. I must have about 15,000 hours on those three games. When I look back now, it blows my mind of how much time I put into these video games. When I was playing them and I was getting second thoughts about whether or not I was being productive, I would always cope and give excuses like, oh no, but the, but, but the storytelling is really good and it'll help me be more creative and, and I'm, I'm, I'm leveling up and I'm getting disciplined and you know, I'm, I'm playing Call of Duty and in cases I ever go to the army, it might help. Oh, shut up. What the f*** is wrong with you, bro? I might help me if I go to the army. <laughs> shut the f*** up. <laughs> Oh, but it's helping my social skills because I'm playing online with my friends on TeamSpeak. TeamSpeak, bro. What a garbage app that was. All young men who are addicted to video games have a bunch of these excuses that they throw out. Like, oh, the storytelling and, you know, it's good for your memory. And like, oh, but I, I enjoy it. And time spent in enjoyment is not time wasted. All this f***ing bullshit, bro. It is a waste of time. You can get that same feeling of accomplishment, of stimulation, of brotherhood in real life. And it's magnified. What happens after you quit playing that video game that you've spent thousands of hours on? You've lost all the progress. All that fun has just stopped. If you're a young man and you want to improve your life, you want to get more confident, you want to make more money, you want to start attracting women, you want to have like a better social life, you want to have friends who actually love and support you. It starts with self-improvement. Self-improvement is when you start doing the good habits, like going to sleep early, reading books, exercising, eating clean, healthy foods, improving skills like your ability to influence people and persuade and storytelling. It's these things that will level you up in real life. It's these things that make real life feel like a video game where you can level up. What a shame it is that you have a drive inside of you to level up and you waste that in some virtual world that doesn't even matter. Like how mad is this? You'll literally spend hours, weeks, months making money in video games instead of real life. You'll literally spend hours, weeks, months leveling up in video games instead of improving your grades in school or your career or a business. Why did I spend hundreds of hours leveling up my strength skill on RuneScape instead of spending those hundreds of hours leveling up my strength in real life? The reason why so many young men are addicted to video games is because games manipulate that competition and that drive inside of you. But you want to know the worst consequence of being a gamer. You start to believe that you're a loser. You know for a fact that spending hours every day, every week playing video games affects your self-esteem. You can't help but feel a little bit more negative about yourself every time you get up from your crusty black computer chair after a three hour gaming session because you realize that it was kind of fun when you were playing. But the moment that you've stopped playing, the moment that you've logged out, the fun stopped and all you're left with is the consequences. That is late and it's past your bedtime. Now you're going to be sleep deprived for tomorrow and you've got important work that needs to be doing. You keep procrastinating on that piece of work, that assignment that you said you'd do. You can't help but feel bad about yourself when you do that. And besides, you're a young man. You're horny as f You may not have admitted it to yourself, but you really, really want to attract women. You want to have sex. You want to date. You want a girlfriend. Whilst your mind is always obsessed about having a gamer girlfriend, the truth is that the majority of women are unattracted to men who play video games. When you're a gamer, you have this stereotype that you're like a loser, that you smell, and women aren't really attracted to that. Now, of course, you shouldn't change the things that you enjoy just to impress someone, but relationships are like the most important part of life. You would feel so much happier and excited about being yourself if you had like a beautiful girl that you were dating. You shouldn't quit playing video games just to impress a woman. You should quit playing them to impress yourself, to improve yourself, to feel like you're more of a man so that you have more time to do like productive cool shit. 
like lift some weights, learn skills like sales, make a business. It's those things that attract women and even friends to you. And let's talk about friendship. You might not want to quit playing video games because most of your friends play and you all hop on Discord together and you have a good time. This is going to hurt to hear, but I made a video titled, They're Not Your Friends. As much as you can have like so many laughs with people, if your friendship revolves around some kind of pleasure, like video games, drugs, partying, it's not real friendship. You're all friends with the substance, unless you're really, really close, even when you don't play video games. Unless you've both opened up and you've been vulnerable and emotional together and you feel like a very strong connection and brotherhood between you, it's usually not real friendship. That's going to be so hard for you to believe, but when you're not a gamer anymore and you realize that you just don't spend time with those people that you thought were really close, you'll realize that your friendship just revolved around wasting time in the virtual world. There's a reason why you've heard that stereotypical story so many times of a young man who was so consumed by video games up until he quit and that's when his life really started taking off. That's when he started going to the gym and he put on some muscle and he feels like so confident with himself and he makes friends and he meets girls. You've heard that exact same story so many times because that's exactly what happens when you stop wasting time on video games. Share this video with a friend who needs it. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.